Hi guys, welcome back to the next tutorial in our tutorial series on service fabric. In the tutorial so far, we've seen how to create stateless and stateful services, as well as APIs running on service fabric. So in this video, we're going to look at how we can communicate between these services. Service fabric allows us to set up communication between any of the services running in our cluster. In our cluster, we can have multiple applications and even services from different applications can communicate with each other. So we're going to look at communication between various different types of services, including stateless and stateful. And we're back in our jump store application here. So to get started, we're going to add another service to this. We're going to add a stateless service. So this will allow us to see how the communication works in both stateful and stateless services. So let's right click on our application and add our new service. So add new service fabric service. We want a stateless service. And we'll just call this one, say, uh, customer analytics. And this is a stateless service that might get requests for analytics and process them by some means. So just click create to create the service. So the next thing we want to do in order to set up communication is that we want to create another new class library here because we need to define interfaces, so basically contracts that our services will use to communicate with one another. So we can right click on our solution and go add new project. And what we wanna add is a class library.net standard. So this one here and click next. And we wanna just call this anything you want, but I'll just call it communication. And click create to create it. So this is where we need to define our interfaces. And the interface will tell a service that's trying to communicate with the service that implements this interface what methods are available to call. So to start off, we'll rename this as I stateless interface. We'll change its type to interface. And then we can simply define what method we want this service to expose to the outside world. These methods have to be asynchronous, so they need to be task returning. This one will just return a string, and we'll just call it get service details. We need to import system threading tasks. And the last thing we need to do to allow this interface to be used for service fabric communication is have it implement iService. An iService is defined in Microsoft Service Fabric Services Remoting Package. So we need to add that NuGet package to our communication class library. So right click on the project, click Manage NuGet Packages, and then we can just search for Microsoft Service Fabric Services Remoting. And we want to install this package here. Accept. And once that's installed, we can add the reference to our interface to Microsoft Service Fabric Services Remoting. And we'll create a quick second interface here, which will be pretty much the same, but it'll be for our stateful service, and we'll just call it I Stateful Interface. So we want to create a new interface. We'll call it I Stateful Interface. And again, it will have to implement I Service. We already installed the NuGet package, so we should be able to just add the using statement very easily. We need to make it public, and we'll actually just add the exact same method. So we'll just copy that from the stateless interface, and we'll copy it into the stateful interface. And that's our two interfaces that will be used for communication defined. So once we've defined the two interfaces or two contracts that we'll use for service communication, we need to go into our actual services and provide them with a communication stack. Service Fabric provides an out-of-the-box communication stack based on or PC proxy. And this is what we'll use in this tutorial. You can also create your own custom implementations of a communication stack. And this is something that we might look at in a future video. So let's first go into our stateless service. So our customer analytics service. We can see that this is created as a stateless service. So the first thing we need to do is add the interface here. So we need to implement our I stateless interface. So to do that, we can right click on our service project, go to add reference, and then we just need to add a reference to the communication project. 
So this will allow us to then implement the I stateless interface. using communication. So that's what we want. So then this will throw the error customer analytics does not implement interface member. So we just want to implement that and we get a default implementation here. And we can return anything here. So at the moment we're returning a task string. The methods that are used for communication have to be async. So we have to mark them as public async task. And then in this case we're returning a string, but this could be any object. And for now, we will just return the service name from this service. So we want to return this dot context dot service name and to string. So when we remote and call this get service details method on our customer analytics service, it will just return the service name as a string. We also need to provide the default communication stack that we talked about, the RPC proxy communication stack. And this is done in the create service instance listeners method we see here in our customer analytics service. So in this case, we need to install another NuGet package. So we right click on our service and go to manage NuGet packages. And here we're looking for Microsoft Service Fabric services remoting. So we can type that into the search bar, make sure we're on browse and not installed. And then we need to install this one here, Microsoft Service Fabric services remoting. So we install that. And once that's installed, we should be able to override this great service instant listeners. And what we want to do is we want to call this. And then what we want to say is create service remoting instance listeners. And we'll get an error here, but we should be able to use Microsoft Service Fabric Services Communication Runtime. So once we have that reference added and once we've implemented create service instance listeners, our stateless service method get service details can now be called from other services in our cluster. And we do the same thing for our product catalog stateful service. It's very similar. So again, we go into this service here. We need to first implement the interface we defined in communication. And to do that, we need to add the reference to the project where we defined it. So we need to just add this reference to communication. And then we want to use that. So using communication. And then we want to implement I stateful interface. So that's the interface we defined for stateful services. We want to implement that interface, which is the get service details method we added to the interface. So this is our implementation of this. Again, it has to be an async task returning method. Here we're just returning a string. So we'll have one variable called service name, just like in the stateless service. And we'll just call this.context.service name and to string. There we go. And we also want to know what the partition ID is because this is a stateful service and will be partitioned. So when we're calling this remote call, we'll be calling it for a particular partition of the service. So we'll only have access to a certain part of our data and will only be relevant to a certain part of our data. So partition ID is equal to this dot context dot partition ID again to string so we can return them both. And then we want to return both of these values. So we'll first return the service name and then we'll put a little space and then we will add the partition ID. So when we call this method from another service, we'll be returned a string that has the service name and the partition ID. We also need to overwrite the create service replica listeners method. And we do this in a very similar way, except we use a slightly different method. So what we want to call is this dot create service remoting replica listeners. And that's defined in Microsoft Service Fabric Services Remoting Runtime. So again, we'll add that package to our service. Right click Manage NuGet Packages and then add the reference. And once we add that, our two services should be set up for communications. So we just need to add the using statement here and now both of our services should be set up 
to receive requests and receive remote calls to this method here to return a string. So thanks for watching this video guys where we set up the communication for both our stateless and stateful services. In the next video we'll see how do we call these remote methods on our services. If you like the video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel.